Hi, so what we're going to be doing and talking about in discrete math today is predicates and quantifiers. So we're going to start out with a definition for predicates. A predicate is a logical statement whose truth value is a function of one or more variables. We'll be looking at that in just a second. And since it's a function, what it's going to have is it's going to be have a domain, a group that we're going to be taking all of our inputs from. All right. If you want to think about what the range is for it, for those of you who are mathy, the range is true or false. All right. But our domain for the predicate is going to be the set of all values that the predicate can take. So let's take, for example, um, and we're going to look at, here's our notation. We're going to have a capital, capital, say, for example, P. And we're going to have P of X. And we're going to define that P of X is X is even. All right. So X is even. And we're going to classify our domain for P of X as the set of all integers which from now on I'm going to call Z. Now what we'll do is we'll input in a value. We'll take P of, say for example, P of 3. P of 3, I'm going to set that up and I'm going to say, well, is 3 even? Well, 3 is not even. 3 is odd. So consequently, this is going to end up being false. If I take P of 10, P of 10 is going to be true because 10 is even. So that's the idea behind a predicate, OK? Now, what we'll see is you can, you don't have to just take one variable. You can actually take multiples. So let's take, for example, I'll take R of XY. And we'll define that as X cubed equals Y. And now in R of XY, what we're looking for is we're looking for, you know, whether or not when I plug in one X, do I get out, or when I plug in X and Y, do I get out a true statement? So for example, R of 2, 8, is going to be 2 cubed equals 8, right? And that's true. So consequently, true statement, um, that gives me a true predicate. By the way, I should say my, um, I'll let my, uh, my set of values here be Z again. That's my domain. We'll let it be Z. So R of 2, 8, that's true. On the other hand, if we take R of 3, 8, R of 3, 8, that's going to be 3 cubed equals 8, and that happens to be false. All right? So there it is. OK? Now, in addition to that, we could take something like, we'll take a Q of x, y, z. And this one now takes three variables. And what we'll do for something like that is we'll just make this x minus y equals z. So if I want a true statement, I could take Q of 2, 2, 0. And what I get then, I'll plug in 2 minus 2. We'll let that equal 0. And that, in fact, is true. So that gives me a true predicate. There we go. Or we'll take Q of 5, negative 3, 7. 5 minus negative 3 equals 7. And that's false. One thing to notice about this and, and to remember is that these are ordered. They're actually in the place of X, Y, and Z. So we need to make sure that we put in whatever is in that placement, we put in for X. We put in whatever is in the second placement, we put in for Y. Whatever is in the third, we put in for Z. So we have to make sure that whenever we um, put in values for our predicates to determine their truths or our falseness, that we make sure that they follow the order of the actual predicate. All right, so now this next set of objects that we're going to modify predicates with are called quantifiers. And so a quantifier is a modification to a predicate that requests information from the entirety of the domain. And there are two basic um, uh, quantifiers, kinds of quantifiers. There's the existential and there's the universal quantifier. Those are the two that we're going to look at today. All right, so the first one, this existential one, what it's going to do is it's going to ask uh, the question, is there an element in the domain with this quality, with this quantity, this quality, excuse me. And so what we'll do, we're going to represent that with this backwards E. We'll write it as there exists an X, say, for example, P of X. So let's take an example. Let's say, for example, that I want P of X and we'll define this predicate as X plus X equals one. So we're looking for values of x such that when I add it together with itself, it's going to equal 1. So 
Let's take, for example, we'll look at the domain and we'll look at the domain of the real numbers. So we're gonna pick just from the reals in this case. And in the reals, what we know is we know that one half plus one half equals one. So P of one half, in fact, ends up being true. So consequently, if I write this as there exists an X, P of X, in this domain of the reals, the answer is true, because one half makes it true. On the other hand, what if I change my domain, and now I change my domain to the integers? Well, if I change my domain into the integers, I have a problem, because one half is not an integer. Instead, one half is a real number, it's a, a rational number, but it's not an integer. So, are there any integers that will give me back one when I add it to itself? Well, is this statement true or not? That's the question. There exists an x, p of x, right? When the domain is z, well, the answer is it's false. That's simply not going to work. We're not going to be able to do that. I mean, we could do this algebraically. We could see that 2x will equal 1, so x should equal 1 half, right? But that's not an integer. So consequently, when I change my domain, the proof of existence actually changes. I no longer have existence there, right? I can't find one that's within that domain. And so we want to see that when we utilize quantifiers, understanding what the domain is is actually really quite important because it helps us to determine truth, tr truth to the statement. So the next statement that we have to actually look at or the next quantifier that we're looking at is universality. And universality asks the question, is the predicate true for all of the elements in the domain? So when we get a true or false, that's what we're looking at. And so we've got this, the for all, and it's an upside down A. And so we might say something like for all, of, for all X, P of X. And we'll define it inside of a particular domain. So let's take a look at an example. And let's say, for example, we've got the statement p of x, okay, and that is x squared is greater than or equal to zero. x squared is greater than or equal to zero, and let's say for example my domain is z, is all of the integers. In all the integers, is it true that x squared is greater than or equal to zero? So for all x, p of x, and that's, by the way, for all x, is that true or not? Well, let's answer that question, right? For all x, p of x, and I'll say, well, yeah, right? Because if x equals zero, zero is an integer, that actually gives me x squared equals zero, and then after that, everything else is positive, so consequently, the answer here is true. What if I change my domain? Let's say I change my domain and I take it to the reals. And in the reals, I ask myself, well, is it true for all x, p of x? Is that true? And in the reals, that's also true, okay? In the reals, also true because square any number, it's greater than or equal to zero. Great. What about, let's see an instance where changing the domain inside of this universal statement actually changes the, the, the meaning of the, um, or changes the truth, truth value, excuse me. So what about, for example, like this? Let's let P of X, or we'll let Q of X, in this case, be that X is less than or equal to X squared. So X is less than or equal to X squared. And so we'll start out with my domain as all of the integers. Well, in the integers, this is true. For all X, Q of X, is that true, true or false? Yeah, it's true, okay? Because if you have, say for example, negatives, right? If we go with the negatives, then the negative x squared is always positive, so it's necessarily going to always be bigger than x. Great. What about zero? Well, zero is equal to zero squared. Okay, zero equals zero squared, right? Negative a is always less than or equal to negative a squared. And then because we're dealing with the integers, what we also get here for the positives is we get that a is also less than or equal to a squared, where like one is equal to one squared, but then two squared is gonna be four, three squared is equal to nine, so you can kind of see that each one's gonna actually in fact be bigger. So this statement here is in fact true if we are in z. 
What about the domain of all real numbers? Well, in the case of the negatives, for far all x, q of x, in the case of the negatives, we still have truth. Negative a is still less than or equal to negative a squared because negative a squared is also is always non-negative. It's always true for zero. That's also good. Check, right? Because zero is equal to zero squared. That's great. But it's now no longer true for all the positives. Because, for example, if I take one half squared, that equals one fourth, and one fourth is not greater than or equal to one half. One half is in fact not less than or equal to one, one fourth. So this actually makes this false. So that makes that a false statement, okay? So in this case, to prove falseness, we only really need one, what we call counterexample. That one counterexample actually allows us to prove falseness. So that's how the universal quantifier works. What basically we're gonna do is we're gonna say, okay, here's the domain, and for everything within that domain, true or false? Is everything in that domain making this predicate a true statement? Okay, and that way we can actually think about all of the values for the variable rather than just a single value for the variable. So what we've looked at now is we've looked at predicates, we've talked about quantifiers, our existential quantifiers and our universal quantifiers. The last piece here is to get this logical idea of the proposition and how does that relate to predicates, okay? So let's say for example I have, I'm gonna have P of X, and let's say for example that's X is even. Now if you remember, in order for something to become a proposition, we have to actually be able to determine trueness or falseness. So let's say for example in, uh, for a logical statement I say P of X. I'm just gonna say P of X, right? And it's P of X is, I just, I'm like, logically is P of X, true or false? X is even. It doesn't actually really matter what the domain is. I simply cannot, I can't say if P of X is true, is true or false. What we say it is, is we say it's free because there's no value for X here for us to determine truth. And so consequently, P of X all by itself is not a proposition. There's no information there. It's simply not a proposition, okay? On the other hand, if I take P of three and I put in a value, okay, then what I have is I do have a proposition because P of three is false. I can actually state that this, uh, the, the statement here, P of three, is a false statement, and since I can make it true or false, that actually tells me that it's a proposition, okay? And what I say there is, is that it's bound. That is, is that I can state its trueness or falseness, so consequently it's bound to a particular value of the variable. When I add a quantifier in as well, I'm gonna have the same thing happen. So let's take, for example, I take all the sets for Z, okay? And I say there exists an X such that P of X. Well now, can I say that there is a member of the integers such that X is even? Yeah, two, four, six, eight, all right? I make this, this is true, so that means this is bound and since it is bound, that means that we have a proposition. Being bound means that I can actually determine its truthness or falseness. Adding a quantifier binds a predicate, okay? Adding a value in for the variable binds the predicate, allows me to state trueness or falseness. All right, what about for all x, p of x? Well, this is gonna end up being false because it's well, I can think of three. Three is not an even number. Three is odd. We saw that one before. But just because I end up with falseness doesn't mean that the predicate is not bound. It is now, it's bound, all right? And this makes it a proposition. So one of the things that you wanna be careful with when you're doing your logic and you're writing out your logic is don't let your predicates be free. You have to either assign them values, okay? Or assign them quantifiers in order to allow for trueness or falseness. Otherwise, syntax error. I can't do anything with P of X. I need to be told what X is, or I need to be told that I am looking for all X's or an individual X. So this completes our lecture on predicates and quantifiers, okay? They're really important symbolically. They also come up a lot inside of logic, and what you might be able to see is, is that they're gonna become really important mathematically.